Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Josh and I'm here with my latest installment in my video series titled Slack and Co. From the Vault, Harry, Bring Them Back. And so if you haven't seen my first installment, go back and watch that one. That was the holiday winter collection or essentially sense that I would love Harry Slacken to bring back with his relaunch of Slacken & Co. coming hopefully sometime now this year. Happy 2022, by the way. Um, and uh, wanted to dig into the sort of the archives of the vaults from past Slacken & Co. sense that were, for my case, primarily at Bath & Body Works, though Slacken & Co. did exist prior to the large launch at Bath & Body Works, uh, which was, I believe, in 2005, 2006, uh, and lasted until, I believe, late 2012, it's around the time when Slack & Co. stopped appearing on the labels. I want to say the spring 2013 collection is the first time that Slack & Co. did not appear on the candles. Uh, and when Bath & Body Works kind of did a pivot back into uh, their White Barn Candle Company branding. Um, so that's sort of the, you know, the timeline that we're looking at. Um, so going back into the archives, again, I started purchasing Bath & Body Works candles uh, and getting into fragrance and scent and Slack & Co. Uh, products late 2009. So that gave us the 2009 collection, all 2010, 11, and 12 um, to kind of pull out of the, you know, again, my personal <laughs> vault of, of candles that I've yet to fully burn. Um, and so today I want to get into the spring collection, um, which I'm really excited about. Uh, there's a, you know, typically a lot of people are like, oh, fall, autumn, Christmas, winter, those are the ones that matter. But there are so many amazing scents um, and candles worth burning in the spring, into the summer, really year round, which I know, you know, anyone watching this channel is, is already kind of preaching to the choir in that sense. Um, so, but I have, like last time, I've got 12 candles for spring releases. I still will have upcoming my summer, my fall, and then sort of a year round uh, video as well. So five videos. Uh, I started making a little bit of my list and boy, it's gonna be really tough for, of course, fall, but even for summer, there are so many amazing scents that were one and done or were out for a couple of years and then never returned once Slack & Co. departed from Bath & Body Works White Barn. Um, and it's, I might have to do either two-parter for that um, or do like 15 or 20 vid candles in one video because there's just too much to, to leave stuff out. Um, but I was able to whittle down the spring collection to 12, eh, kind of like 12 with, you know, an honorable mention, uh, 13th. Uh, candles that I want to say, Harry, bring them back. Um, not necessarily bring back because, you know, Harry has always said that sort of when he retires a scent, um, it's, it's gone. Um, in this case, I'd say these were forcibly retired. It's not as if Harry said, I don't want to make them anymore. It was, you know, when Bath & Body Works went in the different direction after Slack & Co., uh, you know, the, the, the contract or whatever that was ended, you know, the scents were, you know, kind of in Bath & Body Works hands to decide if they were going to bring out, you know, like a fresh balsam that comes out every year that may have actually been created by Slack & Co. Um, versus some of these that were all created by Slack & Co. but have never come back. So at minimum, I'd love to see Slack & Co., whatever the relaunch of that looks like, um, be something that Harry, again, he's so great at reimagining and really elevating sense. Um, I believe what he can do, what he does do in Homeworks um, is a step above the um, just quality and creativity um, that we see from Bath & Body Works. And so I imagine Slack & Co. will be uh, equivalent or even higher potentially than Homeworks. So you can really kind of elevate these blends that I'm gonna go through today into something, again, reimagined uh, and new for, you know, literally 10 years later, 2022. Um, so the, the ones I'll go through here, I have all but one of them in candle form. One of them I only have in soap form, which is weird for me because I'm such a collector, I usually hold on to stuff. Um, but uh, a little bit more history. Most of these actually are from the 2012 Spring Slack & Co. collection. Um, some of them were scents that appeared earlier in, you know, maybe 2009 or 10 or 11. Um, but there, there was a lot going on that was kind of experimental and in the test markets back when Bath & Body Works and Slack & Co. did test collections, you know, months early in just a handful of stores across the nation. Um, and many of the most experimental, interesting ones Unfortunately, the ones that didn't go wide mass market, um, just based sometimes on branding and, or a lot of times on branding, um, and just if they weren't big sellers, you know, Bath & Body Works marketing would get a little scared off and just go something a little more mainstream, which again, thousands of stores, they're very much a mainstream marketer. It makes sense, um, but it was disappointing because there were so many great scents that most people never got to smell because there were so limited run batches. Now, sometimes, as we'll talk about here, though, and, and many people know, there were repackages or repackages with a twist, as Little Belladier, I think, used to say. Um, within that, it oftentimes was like, hey, these were scents, we liked them, they were 
fine. They tested them and then they rebranded them, remarketed them in a different collection. Uh, point being, there are some really great scents here that I would love to see Harry reimagine. Uh, 2012 really was an experimental year, I think. That's when Home Programs really started blowing up at Bath & Body Works because of the partnership with Slatkin & Co and, and just hitting you know the market at the right time with the right team, I suppose. Um, and so in 2012, there were so many test scents. A lot failed fast and again, um, they, they pivoted, they changed, they launched, you know, maybe they would test 15 or 16 cents and then go wide with eight to 10 or maybe 12 cents. Um, and it was experimental in the sense that they're really, as you'll see here, there were some things that sound odd, but were, in my opinion, again, incredible. Um, I will quickly also say I'm leaving off things um, that were slacking in co-sense that Bath & Butter Works has kind of kept around um, because it's not something that Harry necessarily needs to bring back or, or sort of reimagine um, things like lemon mint leaf or honeysuckle or lilac blossom. Great sense. People love them. We can get them. So first up is uh, sort of the florals, hydrangea. So this one is from 2010. As far as I know, it was only around in 2010, maybe 2009, not really sure, um, or 2011, was it? Yeah, this was 2011, I'm sorry. So 2010, 2011, was not back in 2012. Um, I literally only had like this one and then a little four ouncer. Remember these little four ounce jars of the four and the 14 and a half ounce. Um, this one is incredible. To this day, one of the best florals I've ever smelled. I'm not surprising, so I can always do interesting florals. Um, the notes on this one here, a fresh blend of dewy hydrangea leaves, peony petals, and summer apricot with a touch of sheer musk. Now, Harry says, even with homeworks, he always adds a fruit to his florals, or almost always, because it brings something else to it that makes it more authentic, like you're really standing in the garden or you're actually, you know, picking these flowers because there's probably a fruit tree down the lane. Um, this one, I'm actually going to smell the small one because this is, again, so old. There are some oils like coming to the top of it, so I don't know how long it will last as far as st stable scent. But this candle is so, it's so authentic and I love hydrangeas. I like hyacinths as well, but hydrangeas are so unique, I, I think, in their scent. And this is not powdery, it's not overly sweet. It is so authentic. The dewy, you get the dewiness because it's almost a bit of green here, but not like some of the next scents you'll see. But I, it, again, in the 10, 12 years I've been in, into home fragrance, I've never smelled another candle like this. He's had done a lot of, Harry's done a lot of great florals at Homeworks, but yet none that, that really, um, Matched, yes, but not um, not in a similar vein to this one, which again, the hydrangea, the peony, peony also is really nice, but it's not always great on its own, but mixing that in here with the hydrangea, um, the apricot and the musk, I barely get it because it smells so authentic, but again, apricot is, is sweet, but not cloying, like, you know, it's, it's that, um, like the nectar of that stone fruit, just really, whew, so, 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 so great. So this is a this is a bring back. Similar to that vein, we've got boy this classic here, Flower Shop. This is from the 2012. This is the 2012 um, collection of spring florals. Flower Shop was actually first, I believe, a test scent in 2011. Because the first time I ever did a test scent order, um, I it was for like I think lime ice, um, toasted almond, a couple of others, and Flower Shop. Um, and then it went wide either later that year or maybe even in this um, 2012 collection. The notes on this one, you have seen this back at Bath & Butterix as um, Amsterdam, and I think maybe one other thing they brought it back as, but I forget exactly what the, the names they did. The notes on this one, delightful scent of fresh cut spring flowers, sweet lilac, pink freesia, and hyacinth layered with cooling greens. I will say Harry has somewhat reimagined this one in Garden Blooms and Homeworks. Quite similar, gives the same vibe, it's not a must come back then, I guess, in Slack & Co., but as long as he brings back Garden Blooms and Homeworks, I'll be satisfied. If not, bring it to Slack & Co. But oh, some people joking refer to this one as like, um, you know, like a funeral candle because, you know, cut flowers and carnations and things like that sometimes remind people of funerals or funeral parlors, but it really is a flower shop in the sense that you have this mix of florals, but you very much have the cooling greens as if you know, there's some baby's breath or there's some, uh, you know, palm leaves or just some sort of greenery. Maybe Mr. Kongsbaum, Melanie, would be a better uh, at describing the different greens that are used in, in floral arrangements. Um, but it's, it's just, it's got, it, it's for me, it's like walking through, not a botanical garden. Oh, oh we had a conservatory with, plants and florals and, and everything in, in my town. And this reminds me of that in a way because it's just the perfect blend of all of these different florals and different greens coming in. And it is so authentic. It's not powdery. It's not like a perfume. It's not like, 
anything artificial. It's truly like you were walking through a conservatory or botanical garden. And it's an early spring with those those tulips, the lilacs. Again, fresh cut spring flowers. It's not your summer flowers, it's spring flowers. Amazing, incredible, um, a great sister scent to hydrangea in my opinion. Then we go to this one here, Magnolia. Now I think this collection may have only been at the test stores, like a test line, um, but it was plenty of their normal florals were in this. Flower Shop was in this. Hydrangea, I think, appeared in this. Lilac Blossoms appeared in this. But this one tested Magnolia, failed. Uh, later was released as Southern Magnolia a couple of times. May have come back once or twice over the past 10 years of Bath and Body Works. But boy, is it a great one. And I really liked this, you know, experimenting with just like the colored glass and a, a white wax. Um, but Magnolia read, fresh magnolia petals and orange blossom with cooling greens and muguet. It, uh, again, Southern Magnolia, Magnolia's, you know, Virginia and the Carolinas, like uh, huge magnolia trees everywhere. This is very sweet, um, very dewy. Anytime you have like a blossom, like an orange blossom or an apple blossom, it's gonna be a little bit sweet and kind of fruity, not like the nectar of the fruit, but of the blossom. So a little bit of orange in there, but the magnolia is so heavy. Again, cooling greens, like Flower Shop, had the cooling greens in it. Oh, it's just, it's very, I don't, it, again, it's not powdery, but there's something that is intensely uh, still dried in that. Again, it, 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 it's, I don't know, in some way dewy and dry. It does, it sounds like very like paradoxical, but it's sort of whew, kind of like honeysuckle, how it takes your breath away a little bit because it's so intense. Like, whoo, if you've got allergies, not that, you know, there's like actual, you know, pollen or anything in here. But it's that kind of thing where like people who smell bad without just like, oh man, that's gonna make me sneeze. Just due to the intensity of it. Versus again, your flower shop is cool, is relaxing, is still fresh, but this one is like very, very intense. I think it's fantastic. Again, haven't really smelled anything like it um, in other, other lines, but it's just, yeah, such a, a really great floral. And I'd love to see that one reimagined. I believe there may have been a Homeworks Magnolia um, scent, so maybe he has done something like that. I haven't personally smelled it. Please correct me if, if there is something like that, that has come out. And then two, actually two or three more florals. Again, I'm not the biggest floral fan. You've got Kent from the Candle Channel. He is, you know, the floral expert um, compared to, to my you know, knowledge of, of florals. Um, but a lot of these are for spring florals work. My, one of my other favorite florals is First Bloom, which I only have the soap, wah, wah, kind of boring to have the soap there because it was, I loved it so much, I burned through it and I thought that it would be back all the time and it didn't come back. Like I think once or twice it came back as repackaged a couple of years ago, but nothing recently, except for in soap form, which was, this was in 2019. Um, the notes on First Bloom, dewy pear, peony, water lotus, and sweet apple blossom. So you got, I guess, all the things that I like. I like a dewy, fresh, Somewhat sweet floral, again, throwing in that pear with a floral, slack and classic. Um, the water lotus, sweet apple blossom. So again, the, this, the, the flower of an apple tree. Just, I mean, it, and I love that it's called First Bloom because that name is so perfect in the sense that this is, oh gosh. There's something slightly a little bit sharp in there. Maybe it's the water lotus. Almost like a, you know, I like the the sharp powderiness almost, or, or but also wetness of like a, a jasmine or something like that. But it's so fresh. It can be called fresh blooms, but first bloom, I love it because this is a great one when I had the candle to, to transition through um, when you're, you know, going from like February into March and you want that first, you're not ready for, for the lilac or something too heavy or starting out a honeysuckle, which is more of like a, though it may release in the spring to me is more like a, a mid summer floral. Um, it really is that first one where it's like, okay, they're just popping out of the ground between that and a flower shop, those are the first two for me, and then you can go into the hydrangeas, and then later on, maybe Magnolia even leans towards summer, but I think it could still work for spring. But first bloom, would love to see that one reimagined. And then the final, actually, no, not the final, two more florals, actually, but this is where we're pivoting to a different collection. And this is an interesting one, and I know we're already getting a long video here, but this is where, where I really like talking about like kind of the historicals of Slack and Co. and the tests, when I was like heavily into purchasing all the time, the test collections were so interesting to me. So this one actually came out as part of the same collection of spring 2012, but it was in sort of their market collection, which I've actually have four candles that are more fruity and um, botanical that I'll go through um, in this video. But one of them that leaned more floral was peach lavender. Um, 
really cute marketing on that with sort of like your um, woven basket background, some pop art, um, and then just the, the words on top of it, um, which they did for the, that was the art direction for that line entirely. Um, what's interesting, Peach Lavender, um, again, failed, but I'll first tell you um, the notes here on it. Um, it was a delightful fusion of fresh peach and sweet lavender flower with a touch of bergamot. Before I tell you what I think of it, what's interesting is they actually released at Bath and Body because they were doing a heavy like Paris, Paris, Paris thing, like Paris Amour and just like Paris everything for their marketing for spring of 2012. Um, and so they released some candles, I think actually six candles, um, Paris Daydream, French Garden and Lavender Market, um, which were repackages of uh, failed test scents. So Paris Daydream was Flirt from an old aromatherapy home collection or Sparking Icicles. Uh, from like a holiday collection. Um, French Garden, which I actually have here, was just peach lavender with, you know, new label and some cheesy <laughs> Parisian marketing on there, which like, of course, it's like a bow tie around the uh, Eiffel Tower. It's just, I don't know, it's just um, no disrespect to Paris, um, but just like Americans like, oh yeah, I like Paris. Like, oh, I'm a girly girl. I like Paris. It's so sweet. It's romantic. Not that it's not, but like, that's just what you've been marketed of like the city. So whatever, it's fine. Um, oh, but anyway, and then there was Lavender Market, which was amazing. That was a repackage of the Peace, P-E-A-C-E, from Aromatherapy Home Collection, which was Lavender, Spearmint, and Sage. Really good. I would almost throw that one in here, except it's not to me necessarily as springy as the others. French Garden is worth throwing in there because to me, I'm actually, I put this in here. It's not like it's my all-time favorite. This is maybe lower on my list of the 12 here. But what I think is so interesting about this, first of all, just from, you know, fragrance fans, I think it's interesting that it came out as this, it failed, but then like, actually we can release it as this and sell out. Um, but it is a Slack & Co quality in the sense that he's got French bergamot, you know, got, so that's bitter orange, as well as peaches and then lavender. So of course French lavender, like it, it it's not invalid that it's a Parisian candle because of course lavender is, is so, you know, everything is French lavender this, French lavender that, you know, the countryside and um, and all of that. But um, it's Slack & Co in the sense that he's taking a lavender, throwing in peaches, um, you know, sweet peach and, and the bergamot. So this is almost like a conceptual floral. You can tell that there's peaches you can because it's a sweet lavender, um, but it's not your authentic, like, you know, the way that hydrangea or flower shop is like, or first bloom is very much like, these are fresh cut florals. This is more conceptually a floral, but throwing that fruit in there, classic slack. And it's, it is, it's really, really nice. Um, I've, I love anything lavender, so I won't complain about that. Okay, so those are our first, what is that? Um, five, I guess. So we're getting through it. The next three, um, one more floral, one more floral, but it's from the, another line that actually the same one that flower shop was in um in the floral collection and this was drenched apple flower i will say the uh, some of the other ones in this collection it was there was poppy sunshine and orchard petals and pink tulip um sun kiss blossom there were so many that year it was really impressive drenched apple flower this is one of my all-time favorites period bar none forget the season um notes on it um, a walk through the orchard after a spring shower crisp fuji apples Blend it deliciously with rain-soaked greens and pink lotus blossom. And of course, apple flower, you've got Fuji apples, but you've also got literal like apple blossom. So you've got like a pink lotus blossom, very watery. You've got the Fuji apples. You don't think, many people don't think of apples as like a spring scent, but it totally works for this. And then rain-soaked greens. So I guess my thing is like, I love dewy. I love green florals with a sweetness um, thrown into them. This one, I think there's there's also got to be like, a little bit of some sort of cedar wood or some like, or like birch wood, some sort of, some wood is in here as well. This is quite similar to uh, two scents though that uh, Harry has released under Homeworks. Um, and one of them was Orchard Petal, I believe, or Orchard Petals um, in the three wick 14.5 ounces that are sold at Ulta and Homeworks.shop. And then also, uh, I want to say it was like, oh gosh, not Heirloom Orchard. Um, I'll add it in here, but there was another um, Homeworks apple scent that didn't come back this year. It was the first two years, also similar to this. But it's, it's the apple blossom. It's the cooling greens. It's a little bit of that lotus, which again is, is also like an aquatic floral. 
with some greenery in there and it's just so fresh and it really is like drenched apple flower like it, it's raining in the orchard orchard with the flowers around it's just and enough of that apple like it's not as sweet as a fuji necessarily but it's more of like almost a crisp green apple and if someone smelled this i think they would pick out the apple but it's not an obvious apple it's oh it's just so so good then we've got two more from that collection um spring which you would think would have stuck around i mean it's spring it's so straightforward in what the name is um the notes in this one like a dream of walking in a lush garden with tulips in full bloom sweet apple blossoms yellow daisies and daffodils so you've got again these there's so many interchangeable notes across these blends but they're all very very different like it's not like oh do you buy this one or that one they're so similar these ones in my opinion even as someone who isn't typically like all about florals they're so different that it's worth having all of them um this is a really nice one for an overall spring. This is later in the season. So whereas you've got the dewiness, you know, they say lush garden, did they mention dewiness? No. Um, this one is not quite as dewy or early season as say your first bloom or certainly drenched apple flower um, and not as straight authentic as flower shop because there's a lot more, there's like a heaviness in here. Um, perhaps that's the daisies or the daffodils. Um, I almost get, honestly, maybe some tulip. But there's something in here, I wish we had the full, full notes, that's kind of almost vegetal, like not not fully to like cut grass and not cooling greens, but almost like, um, I mean, oh, it's gonna sound weird. Almost like, I, I wanna say pollen, like I guess it could be the tulip because there's something that's a little bit um, astringent or, um, I guess that's the word for it, like powdery, but kind of astringent and sharp to my nose. It's not quite vegetal, it's still floral. But it's like when you stick your nose in a tulip and it has like those, you know, what is it, stamens or whatever, like the little black things with all the yellow pollen on it. So it, it, it's a little bit sharper, it's not, it's not sweet. Though it has sweet apple blossoms and apples, this is not sweet. This almost, some people could call this more of a greenery candle. Um, but it's just very, very, very traditionally spring, which is, is nice. And very similar to that, but different enough, green grass. This leans fully into more green um, notes. Uh, note on the, notes on this, refreshing as shaded grass on a warm sunny day, dewy greens and Meyer lemon infused with lily of the valley and a touch of jasmine. So lots of florals going on, but a little bit of lemon, a little bit of greens to cool it down to say like it's not, you know, it's not a straight floral. And this is nice. It doesn't smell like a fresh cut grass. I definitely get sort of the, um, some of the lemon in there. A bit of that like Zesty citrus. Uh, this one, honestly, it's I'm not getting great scent on it because it's old and I've never burned it and it's from 2000, what, 2012? So this is about to be 10 years old. But green grass, it is sort of, you know, it's a fresh spring day. Um, I, I wouldn't, I, maybe this isn't the best name for it because it doesn't smell exactly like fresh cut grass. It's other kinds of, you know, it's not like your lawn grass, but less of a f straight floral. Like you can't necessarily pick out the flowers, individual flowers, like you can as the other ones, but still like, uh, almost, it could be like, um, this is not a great description because I don't mean to like belittle the scent, but like if you have like, uh, like an air freshener or, or glade from back in the day and it's like spring meadows or something like almost leaning a, a little bit towards sort of like your laundry scent, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize this as a laundry scent, but not far off from it, like the kind of notes you get from that or the vibe you get from that, or like, in my mind, like the type of time of, type of day and time of day that I would want to burn it on. So that's your green grass, really, really nice. So now we're getting into the final four, finally. Um, and these ones are, in some ways for me, more exciting. Um, again, I love some of those florals. They're, they're really great for many reasons. These ones lean more fruity, a, a weird mashup of scents. Um, and what's wild is all four of these were failed test scents. A couple of them might've gone wide, but none of them came back after that first year, which is crazy to me. First up, this is from that market collection, Blackberry Grapefruit. Um, this one is was a terrible, terrible burn. I think it's like, ask anyone from back in the day who was a, a candle fan um, at Bath and Body Works. And like, there were two or three fragrances like that year that were known as like in, impossible to, to burn well. This is one, but oh my gosh, it's so good. All right, notes on it. 
From, fresh from the orchard, a luscious blend of sun-ripened blackberries and juicy grapefruit with a touch of creamy sandalwood. So I'm gonna give us three notes in there, but it is so spot on. It is so creamy. Grapefruit, you know, it's like, the grapefruit is in the, I'd almost say like, it's like grapefruit zest. It's not acidic or tangy. It's very, there's some, maybe it's the sandalwood making it, but it's so creamy, this candle. But the blackberry is spot on. Like it's almost blackberries and cream with like zest of, uh, like it's like a blackberry panna cotta, almost gourmand, like a blackberry panna cotta with, I don't know where the sandalwood comes in, but with like a bit of uh, grapefruit zest just sprinkled on top. It's so, so nice. I actually, the blackberry cream frosting that came out Bath Bath Works this year with her holiday collection, when I smelled it, I think Kent said the same thing. There was something in that blackberry that reminded us both, I think, of this candle. Um, I hadn't purchased it, but I actually ordered it um, during some annual sales, so I'll get that soon, and I will do a video comparing the two. Uh, they're not the same by any means, but the blackberry is a similar blackberry, which you don't get blackberry very often in, in candles, unless it's within a general berry mix. But just uh, sweet and creamy and bright and fresh, but not your typical you know, fresh picked cherries and straightforward, just fruit. Really, really interesting. Then we go, similar vibe, um, honeydew and thyme. So you've got a fruit and throw in like herbaceous literal herbs in this case. Um, an inspired combination of juicy melon and fresh picked thyme layered with green mint leaves. Boy, oh boy. What I love about this first, it's so, it is so authentic with what they're saying. Honeydew, you don't get honeydew a whole lot. It's watermelon, 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 maybe some cantaloupe or just generic melon. Um, this is truly that green honeydew. Super sweet, but you know, almost like your cucumber melon kind of cooling melon. Absolutely get those green spearmint. I don't think it's peppermint. It's those soft spearmint leaves, but they're, it's not like uh, toothpaste minty at all, very low on, on the mint. It's just enough of it there that it's not overwhelming. And the thyme, it, it has like, it's not dry thyme, it's a fresh green thyme leaves. It's not overly heavily timed. I think it probably failed because people thought, oh, honeydew, it's not watermelon lemonade, oh, thyme, who wants, what's thyme smell like? It smells like incredible because it is a soft, sweet fruit with a little bit of something extra in there. And it was just, it was honestly too sophisticated for, for people to, to appreciate it. But that's why I would love to see Harry reimagine something like Honeydew in Time. So, so great. Two more, one is like super weird sounding for most people. And the other, well, maybe they both are, I don't know. <laughs> Sage and cucumber. Oh man, this one is so great. This is again, this isn't your like stuffing autumnal, sage or like the sage you see in like under the Christmas tree or things like that. This one is a very green, fresh sage. Notes on this, an organic favorite, just picked cucumber and fresh garden sage, combined perfectly with Asian pear and ginger for a soothing treat. So, so interesting. Oh my gosh. This, this one is like, this should have been as part of, I've said this for years and I, I've yet to see it come to fruition, like a spa, a true spa collection with very unique, not just thrown together like aromatherapies, but like very unique spa um, lines. This is so relaxing. Um, the cucumber is not overly um, sharp, but sometimes people don't like cucumber because they think it's too almost astringent. And the sage is very light. Like I wouldn't pick out sage as, as the primary thing. It's like, it's in the background there and it is very green and like a wet sage. Pear, I think a little bit of pear because this reminds me somewhat of green tea and white pear, um, which was Slack & Co. You probably will see that in my year round video uh, for Bring It Back From The Vault. But really, really nice. Again, like almost not quite foody. Like this isn't saying that you want to eat this. It, it really is like a an infusion to like calm your nerves more than anything, or maybe it's like infused water or something like that. A tiny bit of sweetness, but overall just so nice, so green. Per the wax really matches the, the you know the the vibe I get from it. And then the final one that I have here for the you know the top twelve, tomato garden. Now there was was it heirloom tomatoes? I think came back um, at Bath and Body Works, but that was actually 
uh, like heirloom greens, which came out in 2013 repackaged, which is a really nice, heavy green, crunchy green scent. But tomato garden, straight up tomato with a little bit of berry, I want to say. Yeah. So this is fresh picked ripe cherry tomatoes infused with sweetened black currant and a touch of white musk. Okay. I mean, this is like you are rubbing that the green of tomato, the, the stem, and you're biting into that cherry tomato pops your mouth and it's super sweet. It's a little bit acidic. It's just so almost kind of like floral as far as the fruit goes. Um, and the sweetened black currant, I don't necessarily get that. I almost feel like they might've thrown that in just so that people wouldn't be scared off by like, why would I want a tomato candle? It's so fresh and clean and bright. Like put this in your, your kitchen after cleaning it instead of just your typical like lemon zest candle in the spring or like a gr green grass because it's not overwhelming. It is sweet, but it's, it's again, it's a different kind of sweet because it's not apple sweet, it's tomato sweet. Really love that. Would love to see something like that come back um, along those lines. Could be, again, reimagined with a tweak, but just, I really, really like that. And then my final one is actually just, uh, it's not in my collection. It's not one that I, uh, like, officially am requesting as like, hey, bring it back, Harry, bring it back. But I know a lot of people, like on Harry's Instagram and everywhere, always talk about um, Pineapple Orchid, which I actually do have here. People loved this candle. This was like years and years. I think this came out like 2005, six, seven, like for many, many years, and then stopped pretty much once Slack and Nico left. Uh, the notes on this, this light fruity floral blend of pineapple and fragrant orchid adds a delicate brightness to your home. I like this, but I don't, I'm not the, I don't know that I've, I've had an orchid, but I've never really noticed they're having much of a scent. To me, this sounds strange, but to me, this smells like watermelon bubble gum. Um, it's so sweet. It really is like bubble gum or bubble delicious from when I was a kid. Like watermelon bubble gum is completely what I get from this. Maybe there's an orchid that is like that. I get a little bit of pineapple, I suppose, but like, to me, this is like pineapple, watermelon, bubble gum. It's really nice. To me, it's not an orchid, or it's not a floral by any means. Um, fruity floral, heavily fruit, really nice. It is a very nice scent. Um, to me, I just feel like I'd give it a different name, but it is nice, honorable mention, because so many people call it out um, as like an OG Slack & Co they love. That is it for the Slack & Co from the vault, Harry Bring Them Back spring collection. Um, sorry for going on for so long. Thank you for sticking with me through this long video. Um, let me know which of these, which of these have you smelled? Which ones do you love? Which ones, you know, have you seen come back in various forms or something similar to it um, from other fragrance houses, fragrance brands? Would love to hear about it. Um, that pretty much wraps it up for now. Next up will be the summer uh, from the vault video. That's going to be a big one. It might be a couple weeks for that one because there's a lot to think about from that. And I've got some other fun hauls coming um, and comparisons to do for you as well. In addition to the Slack and Go from the vault videos. And until then, everyone, take care.